It's a book promoting vegetarianism. If someone gets me a book against Islam, I will say that book is false. Excuse me, I don't allow a debate between the audience and the speaker. The audience just put the question, the speaker can only answer the question. Don't get involved. I will not allow Dr. Zakir, neither Mr. Zaveri to get involved in any debate with the audience. This is not a debate time for the audience. Kindly note. You can continue with the answer. I'm going to start with the answer. You can start the timing also. If I'm going to be interrupted every time, I want to give a complete answer. I would request the chairperson not to be biased towards one person only. If they're interrupting my answer, I have to be given time. And sister raised an argument, which is there not only in this book, even in other books on internet. You go to the internet, the same argument is given. First thing is, that is milk, veg or non-veg, is a big question. There are vegetarians who say that milk is non-veg. This book. I'm not blaming the speaker. This book. Again, says milk is non-veg. If we have milk, so many diseases. Other vegetarian foundations say no. We are lacto-vegetarian. We have milk. Whether milk is non-veg or veg. My simple question is, if you don't want to hurt the animals, when you milk, when you milk the animal, it causes severe pain. You know, artificial milking of animal causes pain. You ask a breastfeeding woman, certain times she has problems, and she has to extract milk artificially, it is so painful. So when you extract milk from the animal, it's painful. When you don't agree that animals are meant for food, how can you milk the animals, the cattle and the cow? It is so painful. It is nothing but robbing the animal. If you say the animal is not meant for food, and if you have the milk of that animal, you're robbing the milk which is meant for the offsprings, for the calves. And the example that was given, that a cow, on average, in a day gives 10 kgs of milk. Again, this book. If it's wrong, no problem. It's on the internet also. 10 kgs of milk in a day. In a month, 300 kgs. In a year, about 3,000 kg. Do you calculate milk in kgs? In liters. Why in kgs? I don't know. Ask the author. And then further it says that 3,000 kgs of milk, it will feed 6,000 people. So in full lifetime, it will feed 90,000 people at one time. And the cow, if you kill, only 1,000 people. Which is better? 90,000 or 1,000? Why are you killing the goose that's laying the golden egg daily? It's not a wise proposition. And I agree with that. But the point to be noted is that no milkman will ever give a milking cow to the slaughterhouse. No slaughterhouse will ever purchase a milking cow because a milking cow is multiple times more expensive than a cow which has passed its age of milking. In Bombay, it costs 20 to 25,000 rupees milking cow. An old cow which has crossed the milking age cost only three to 5,000 rupees. So what we do, we non-vegetarians, the cattle, we look after it till the time it gives milk. After it stops giving milk, we slaughter it. We take all the eggs of the goose. When it stops laying, we slaughter the goose for its flesh. Saab bhi mare or lati bhi na tute. Two birds with one stone. We are more intelligent. <laughs> Again, the argument giving. Let's see some animals. You can use them in field, etc. You can use them for plowing, for transportation. If you love the animals so much, why do you overload them? And furthermore, the Indian statistics tells us that out of the population of cows, oxes, and bull, only 25% are productive. The remaining 75% are unproductive. Either past the age of milking, or they are males. All done females. Bulls, oxes. Now, what will you do with the 75% of excess non-productive cow, goat, bull, ox? One option, you rear them up yourself. An average bull or cow requires 18,000 a year for living, according to the statistics. Their statistics, not my statistics. 18,000 a year. So after they give milk, they live another four or five years. Which farmer will bear the burden of millions of cow every year 18,000? Second option is give to give their organization. They leave it open, it enters the field, eats up the crop. Third option, leave them in the jungle, animal will kill them. The last option is best, after they reach the age of milking, utilize the milk, give it to slaughterhouses, it benefits the farmer, he gets some money, and even the animal benefits the human being by eating the meat of the animal, as well as his hide for leather, as well as the bones. Hope that answers the question. Next question for Mr. Zaveri. According to 
Kastur Chan Jain in the marriage of the 22nd Tirthankar, Aras Nemi, popularly known as Nemi Nath, meat of animals and birds was served. And both the bride and the bridegroom, according to Shastra, were Jains. Another incident was quoted that Chenna, a Jain Shravika who was the wife of Bhimsar Shrenik, a contemporary of Mahavir, was pregnant. And she had the desire to eat the heart of her husband. Bhimsar's eldest son, Abhay Kumar, instead gave her some meat of a dead animal, and Chela, think, thinking it to be her husband's heart, ate it. I don't know how authentic is this article, and whether what Kastur Chan said is true or false. What is its explanation? Please explain. I'm referring to, uh, to the article from the Caravan series, December 1981. Thank you, sister. First of all, I will uh, request the coordinator to only allow those questions coming out of my talk, not out of any other book or other references for which I am not responsible. But because I am a true Jain, I know definitely about the Jain history, about uh, Neminath Tirthankar. Yes, it is true. That is why he propagated that the killing of, that is exactly why he renounced the world, that for my marriage, are you going to sacrifice all these innocent creatures? No, I don't want such a feast for me. And that is why he became a Jain Muni and ultimately a Tirthankar. So that is why I can say that all Jain Tirthankaras have yeah, absolutely, in absolute terms, have prohibited non-veg food. Thank you. And please restrict your questions to my talk only, not because it seems, I don't know, it seems that these books were given in all uh, good faith, that they should understand our viewpoint. It seems that they are all distributed to those people and they are now asked to ask questions. Uh, I don't think that is fair. You can ask me any question from my talk. I will be very uh, sir, uh, sir, happy to say. Sir, that. I would like and to I will request any, any question can be asked on the topic. The, the thing is there, whether it's in the talk or out I of the talk. I don't mind. That speakers, is okay. Uh, not necessarily. The and uh, another point I will tell any Mr. Coordinator that uh, Mr. Vip Trivedi and myself, we both have got other meetings, so we would like to conclude within five minutes. What I would suggest. See, the time given to both the speakers to speak was 50-50 minutes, then 15-15 minutes was for response, then we would have a question-answer session for 50 minutes. If any of the speakers would like to forfeit the time of not carrying on with the question session, and if they have an emergency, I would excuse them, but I would continue the question-answer session for 50 minutes, because that has what been the chart given to me. I have to execute it like I had been told, Dr. Zakir cannot in his talk or response speak on any other religion. Forcefully got him not to speak on it. I'm telling you forcefully I had to convince him you cannot touch anything else. I got him convinced because that was a request, his respect. Now both what both speakers have agreed to, I have followed that. Anything which both speakers don't agree, I've thrown it out. Let me be very clear. We have said 50 minutes, we'll allow 50 minutes, but if one speaker would like to leave early for any emergency or any requirement, a person has got a full free will and a choice. I would respect that requirement, but we'll continue question answer for 50 minutes. I've written down the time, 12.45, close down at around 1.30, right? So I think that is being very fair and clear on my part. The next question for Dr. Zakir. Assalamu alaikum, Zakir bhai. My name is Khan Abdul Sami, and my question to you is, Food value charts are distributed by vegetarians showing that the proteins and iron content of vegetarian food is higher than non-veg food. And thus they say veg food is more nutritious than non-food. Your comments, please. Thank you. So I asked a very good question. I would like to reply to the question posed by the learned speaker also. He doesn't know who distributed them. It is given in writing out here. It is given by Rushab Foundation to IRF saying, we would be pleased to give you more such material in huge quantities if you like the same to be circulated among Muslim brothers in Mumbai. Free of charge, huh? The brother has asked a question that there are fruit charts being distributed. Yes, even we get in a foundation. We didn't respond, saying that it is, it's not worth responding. It's not worth responding. But when the request came, 
from the Rushab Foundation. Are you willing? I reluctantly agreed, you know, it is not a topic of scientific thing. It's a well-known fact. He said, yes, we'll debate. I said, fine, so I'm here, just replying. Why should people get irritated if you can quote me from any book? As long as it's within the topic, I will inshallah answer. If I don't know, I will say I don't know. If I know, I will say I know. I know your question, and when I got that chart, it gives food value chart, saying that proteins among the veg food is more than non-veg food. And even Mr. Rashmi has a very in his talk, he said that the value of proteins, the quantity is more. Mr. Rashmi has already said that there were only three essential amino acids. You ask any doctor, it is not three, it is eight. No wonder five is lacking. It is eight essential amino acids which are not synthesized in the body. The remaining are synthesized. These essential amino acids should be given by the external food source. The proteins of animal foods, the biologically complete, known as higher protein, because they contain all the eight essential amino acids. The veg protein are lacking in one or more of the essential amino acids. It's a scientific answer. So even though the value may be more, 20 up, 10 down, it is not complete. The veg protein, the incomplete protein of lesser quality, animal protein is of higher quality and complete protein. Similarly, if you analyze, even the iron you get from the that is of two types. One is hem iron, one is non-hem iron. Hem iron can be absorbed easily in the body. Non-hem iron cannot be absorbed easily. In the animal food, there is hem iron as well as non-hem iron. The vegetable food contains very little hem iron. Therefore, they cannot absorb. Therefore, there's more deficiency of iron in them. So even I agree with you, the iron content in figures may be high. The protein content may be higher. Down the conclusion is, veg food is more nutritive. It's misleading the people. It's nothing but misleading. I would call it in plain English, fraud. Who's doing it? Some vegetarian society. Misleading the people. And fraud is prohibited in every religion, small or big. Whether major or minor religion, fraud is prohibited. So, I would like to ask you a question. Would you prefer taking 10 notes, 10 notes of rupees 20, or one note of rupees 500? If you know the value for money, you choose the second. Hope that answers the question. The next question for Mr. Zaveri. Assalamu alaikum. I am Javed Sheikh. My question is to Rashmi Bhai. Rashmi Bhai, in your talk, you mentioned that uh, diseases transmitted through meat, flesh, to human beings. But uh, plants also affected by some diseases, viral, bacterial diseases. So you can get diseases from plant, vegetarian food also. You also mentioned Dean Ornish and uh, Deepak Chopra, references and uh, recommendation of uh, those doctors uh, if you believe in recommendations of doctors and medical professionals, Trividis have also mentioned that. If you believe in that, I will quote only a simple example. When I was a child, doctors, when uh, I was suffering from fever, doctors were suggesting that don't take bath by cold water. But nowadays, they are telling, when I get fever, they are telling that please take bath by cold water only. Huh? See, so if you are believing in quotations, statistical data, and uh, medical things, so please give statistical data. Dr. Zakir Naik mentioned survey of America regarding coronary heart disease. So do you have any statistical data regarding coronary heart disease in India, whether it is uh, affected to more susceptible to those uh, who are having diet vegetarian diet or to non-vegetarian diet? I would request you all to put your question briefly, you, please. Your question is so long that <laughs> one forgets. Question, uh, last part is the question. Coronary heart disease is yeah. asked. See, regarding coronary heart disease, yeah, plants also, if you consume the decayed plant, plant food, I mean, the decayed fruits, definitely it will carry germs. The point here is that the um, animals, that carry the germs, they are more dangerous 
and they are likely to carry more diseases than plant. Another thing is that which I have said is that uh, animal food contains excessive protein, cholesterol and saturated fat. So these two things combined that will make uh, uh, non-veg food prohibitive. Coming to the statistics, I have got that book, it's, there is no time, there is not a platform to argue about the statistics. I have got complete statistics uh, that uh, more people are suffering because of uh, heart disease, uh, those who are flesh eaters, than the veg people. Now, I, at, at the moment, I cannot give you those facts and figures that uh, I have got it, then I can supply it to you later. Thank you. No counter question, please. Yes, the next question for Dr. Zakir. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, brother. Uh, brother, my name is Safia. I'm a revert to Islam. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, in the book Vegetarian or Non-Vegetarian, Choose for Yourself by Gopinath uh, Agarwal, uh, there are quotations given from major world religions, including Hinduism and Christianity, that non-vegetarian is forbidden, prohibited. And how do you say it's permitted? My sister asked me the question that there are quotations from the same book, quoting various major world religions like Christianity and Hinduism, saying that in that religion it is prohibited. So how come I said that there is not a single major religion which says that non veg food in general is prohibited? I clarified the Islamic viewpoint. It's a misquotation, out of context, misunderstanding. I do agree one thing, that there are certain quotations, sometimes non veg food is prohibited, even in Islam. Like for example, the verse I quoted, Surah Maida chapter 5, verse number 1, it says that don't do hunting in pilgrimage. Within the sacred pilgrimage, don't do hunting. If you are fasting in the month of Ramzan, sunrise to sunset, don't have non veg food, don't even have veg food. If I say don't have non veg food during fasting, that doesn't mean non veg food is prohibited. Prohibited only during that time. So similarly, there are quotations in the religious scriptures. At certain time in fasting, don't have non veg food. We got another question in Christianity. And I've read that book, therefore I can reply. They say that in the Bible it is mentioned that you can't have dead food. In brackets, they put meat. It's not there. What they're quoting, the reference is not given. I, being a student of comparative religion, I give talks on diets also. And they're referring to the book of Leviticus, chapter number 17, verse number 15, as well as the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 21. It says that thou shalt not have the meat that dies of itself. Dead meat is prohibited. Not all meat. Dead meat. They say dead food and bracket meat. It is dead meat is prohibited. Even in the Quran, Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 173, Surah Maitha chapter 5 verse number 3, Surah Aram chapter 6 verse 145, Surah Nehal chapter 16 verse number 115, Hurramat alaykumul maitudu waddamu wa lahamul khinzir, wa ma uhilla li gair illa bi. Forbidden for you for food, huh? dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine, and any food on which any name besides Allah has been invoked. Where it is allowed? If you read the book of Genesis chapter number 9, Verse number two and three, it says that they will fear you, they will dread you, all creatures of the earth, all fowls in the sky, all creatures that live on the earth, as well as all the fishes in the sea, they shall be delivered to you. Next verse, Genesis chapter 9, verse 3, says that every creature that moveth on land and is a living creature, they are meat unto you and also herbs and shrubs. Mention the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 9, that ye shall have the meat of all the things in the water. All that has fins and scales, you shall eat. Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 11 says that you shall have the lawful meat of the birds. Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 20 says that ye shall eat the meat of the lawful fowls. It's allowed. Further, if you read, it's mentioned in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 5, verse number 13 and 14, that if you have milk, you are weak. If you have strong meat, you are powerful in reasoning. Bible says that, not I. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 24, only quotation, verse number 41 to 43, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, goes in the upper room, and he says, have you any meat to eat? And the disciples gave him a piece of broiled fish and honeycomb, fish, and he ate before them. 
Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. In the book of Romans, chapter number 14, verse number 2 and 3, it says that one who believeth in eating all things, he can eat. Those who are weak, they only eat herbs and shrubs. But anyone who eateth should not insult those who eateth not. And those who eateth not should not judge those who eateth. This is law of God. Hindu scriptures. If you read the law of Manu, chapter number 5, verse number 30, it's clearly mentioned that the eater can eat any creature that lives, even if he eats every day. A creator created some creatures to eat and some to be eaten. Laws of Manu, Manu Smriti, chapter number 5, verse number 31, it says that eat in a sacrifice, this is the law of a god. Manu Smriti, chapter number 5, 42, it says that a twice born Yes. No, please. Please. I'm always prepared. I'm always prepared when I quote scriptures. Therefore, it's not on the Answer. Therefore, I kept it behind. Otherwise, my books are in the front always. They're compelling me to reply. Therefore, I'm replying. It's within the rules of the debate. I haven't completed yet. <laughs> so I have to speak for five minutes. What? We would request anyone not to disturb in between. Yes, please don't disturb. The question. We'll and you can say, who's disturbing? See, we'll when I'm speaking. We'll another 20 seconds, you know, because this wastes time, you know. And then my time is up, I will stop the speaker. No, but someone disturbs me, I should get more time. Okay, okay. we get. <laughs> Complete the answer in 30 seconds. It's further mentioned in the Manu Smithi chapter number 5, verse number 35, you can have meat. In Rig Ved, book number 10, hymn number 16, verse number 10, you can have meat. Rig Ved, book number 10, hymn number 85, verse number 13. Rig Ved. Book number 10, hymn number 86, verse number 13. Says the same thing. You can have meat in Mahabharat, Anushashan Parv, chapter 88. If you read, Bhishma gives the advice to Yudhishthar. It's also mentioned in Manusmiti, chapter number 3, verse number 256 to 272. It's mentioned there that if you want to please your ancestors, if you give herbs and shrubs, you will gratify them only for one month. If you give fish for two months, if you give venison, the flesh of deer, for three months, if you give mutton, for four months, if you give flesh of birds for five months, if you give goat meat for six months, if you give spotted deer for seven months, if you give meat of black antelope for eight months, if you give cow one full year, if you give bull it is 12 years, and if you give rhinoceros and red meat of goat forever, inexhaustible. So if you have to satisfy your ancestors, according to Rigved, you have to give more, you have to give red meat. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Gulfa, and this question goes to Mr. Zaveri. Uh, sir, in uh, your dialogue, you said, Jain Munis don't kill plants, they ask for arms. So is it that they force others to kill plants for them? Or is it that when they put masks on their face, they are not killing the germs, and others are killing the germs by not putting the mask on the face? What is it? Please clarify. It's a very good question, sister. I'm really very happy. Of all the questions, I would definitely give you first number because it, it is said in Jain religion that you should not kill anybody, you should not uh, allow anybody to kill, and you should not appreciate if one kills. So all these three things are there. So if a Jain Muni comes to know that this food is prepared for him, he will not take it. So this is the rule of Jain Muni. When they come to us for begging, they ask us very clearly, and we also know, that they will ask us, have you prepared anything for us? We have to very honestly say, we have not prepared anything, it is for us. We have prepared, say, four chapatis, 
you will take only one, you will be happy with three. This is the way of begging of a Jain Muni. He will not kill, he will not allow others to kill, he will not uh, propagate killing, he will not even eat if he comes to know that this food is prepared for a Jain Muni. I am happy that in this august and enlightened audience, I have been given an opportunity to clear the viewpoints of Jain Muni. Thank you very much. Uh, and I will now request the coordinator next. that uh, Mr. Trivedi and myself, it is really going on so nicely five that minutes, we would sir. like to continue minutes, here for uh, hours together, but I am sorry that time sir, constraint the last is such. Two questions will allow five minutes are left. Two I don't think uh, it will be. In, uh, I think uh, <laughs> we have been talking so much about vegetarian food and non vegetarian food, but we are all hungry now. <laughs> I think we should go and eat. So, only last two questions and then we defer. Uh, the Mr. Trivedi has said we'll allow last two questions on the mic. Uh, when can we have the next question for Dr. Zakir? Yes. Acha, there's a request for uh, Mr. For you want to ask question too? No. But they should have to follow. But I think you should have come up in the queue, you know. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my question for Zakir Bhai is, are non-vegetarian food deficient Achha, in There is a request from the uh, others. What we will do, we will, what I will do, see, but there is a request from the side, allow one or two people, uh, people to ask questions to Dr. Zakir. What I would suggest, let the speakers, in the time they're available here, let the other two speakers ask question. Then Mr. Trivedi and uh, Mr. Dhaviri can leave. Then I will give the chance so that I'm not unfair to you also. Both people, so that, no, I've told them they wanted to leave, so I have give, to give them an opportunity to leave. They wanted those two people to ask questions. They can ask Dr. Zakir. Which are the two people, uh, Mr. Zaveri? Uh, Mr. Buddy and uh, the... Uh, uh, chance de denge ek. Uh, then after that, we will carry on. The other two people will be given chance so that I'm not unfair to them. I hope the audience bears with me for another 10. Uh, Mr. Trivedi and uh, Mr. Zaveri would like to leave after that. So let those two people ask questions. Acha, we'll allow only no. No, no. He is leaving. Let let us ask yes. two questions to him and let him hear. Yes. Okay. Yes, let us also ask a question. Okay. 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 Yes, let those yes, two agreed. people ask question, uh, which Mr. Zaveri has requested. Mr. Bade, who's Mr. Bade? Acha, one Mr. Bade and that. Rule, rule, okay. Will not. Acha, and the other two, they two. Acha, we'll allow them to ask two questions to. One. To, to Doctor Hussain. Excuse me, Mr. Zoveri. Okay, now one question for, yes, one question he'll ask, one you'll ask, then, then I will allow yes, Mr. Zoveri, after you all have finished your two questions, yes. and one, one minute, have, after they've finished the two questions, you've finished your two, I, I'll allow them to leave, then the other two who have missed their chance will be given permission. Beyond that, those who are missing because of these two people will be given a chance. Beyond that, I will not allow. Please, we have Dr. to complete Saab. the program. Yes, Namaste sir. And uh, 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 I have short, Bismillah brief and to the point. Uh, Dr. Saab. Sir? Dr. Yeah, Saab. Brief. Kishori, sir? Yes. Uh, brief and My to the point. My question is this. I went to see the picture, khan e khuda There was a session of three days. So people, so Haji Saab, they were wearing sandalwoods. And then beside that, not eating any uh, as a non meat food, no haircut, nothing, a complete brahmachari or sannyasi. When the picture was over, I asked them, Bhai, what is this? Those three days, complete renunciation, sannyasi, uh, brahmachari, what reply they gave? He said, Khane khuda tha. Mene kaha, Musliman bhaiyo, sara sansar khane khuda nahi hai. I would forward your question. Please reply to me that both those three days they were offering us Khane Khuda. What about the whole world is Khane Khuda? Why the killing should not be stopped everywhere, especially in India? This is my question. We will not allow that question. Sir, on the request of the oh, chief guest and the speaker, will not allow that answer. May we have the... Mr. Rashmi Bhai Zaveri requested the person to ask a question out of turn. I am willing to answer. I am willing to answer. 
If chairman says no, if chairman says no, then I will. I would love to answer if you allow me. Okay. Anyway, I will control the order. Nothing will go wrong. Okay, we'll allow him, but a sh short this thing. What, what was the question? I didn't hear it. I heard the question. I'm supposed to answer. <laughs> it's okay. a very good question. Okay, now quickly and a quick answer, then we'll allow the other uh, gentleman. It's a very question, good question. Yes. It's a very Start. good question. It will not create problems. I believe though you all are vegetarians out here, we aren't that violent. It won't create problems, I take guarantee. I will not say something that will create violence. Yes, I know there are non-veg and veg meats in Ahmedabad and Gujarat and there were riots and all here. As far as I'm concerned, I speak logical, then nothing happened. No, but I asked a very good question. He said that he had seen pilgrims going and for three days, they didn't have meat. They didn't have meat. It's on Islam. It's on Islam. It's on Islam. Why Islam allows like this? No, he's asked a question asked on Islam. He's a question on Islam. No, but not asking on Jainism. What's the problem? Are you so much afraid that the answer will make him a non-veg? He will yet be a veg. No problem. I don't want you to become a non-veg. The brother asked a very good question, that why there don't you have non-veg? It's a misinformation. I've been for several times. Whoever told you, told you a lie that we don't have non-veg. The rule out there is that in that sacred part, at that time, you cannot kill any animal for hunting. At that time only. But not eating non-veg. I have gone there. I eat non-veg. Who says you can't eat non-veg? Yes, we are dressed up in two pieces of unsown cloth. You know why? You know why? Because it's the biggest annual gathering in the world. People come from America, from Canada, from India, from Pakistan, from Indonesia, all dressed up in two pieces of unsown cloth. Identical. You cannot make out the person next to you whether he's a king or a papa for universal brotherhood. Not theoretical, practical. Universal brotherhood. <laughs> when we offer salah, we offer salah shoulder to shoulder. We eat food, we eat together. We eat even non-veg. Where you got this from, I don't know. Whoever told you, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, he has told you total falsehood. I'm telling you. I've been for Hajj several times. I've been for Umrah. It's totally wrong. And for universal brotherhood, everyone comes there. So that you can make out people from various parts of the world. We have to be one brotherhood. Islamic brotherhood is that all human beings are brothers. And Muslims are brothers in faith. Yes, brother. <laughs> Mr. Zaveri, this question is for you. At the end of your speech, Mr. Zaveri, this question is for you, please. Yes, put forward any question. Mr. Zaveri is having his attention there. <laughs> Mr. Zaveri, this question is for you. At the end of your speech, you have listed 16 points differentiating between the herbivorous animals and the carnivorous animals. Now, I don't feel there is anyone in the audience to know these differences except that you want to you want to give emphasis on the point that being giving the comparisons of herbivorous animals, you want to show, you want to reflect that we humans should also be herbivorous. That is, we should be vegetarian. This is what I understand. Zakir, Dr. Zakir has already put, uh, has already touched few of the points. Now, Dr. Zakir and Mr. Zaveri, I'm not a medical student by profession. I'm an engineering student. I had biology only up to my 10th standard, and thereafter only I had gathered some knowledge from here and there. Ask your now, question, please. Question. Now here are the points which I want to get a comment from your side is that uh, you have said that pytalin is there in the saliva of the herbivorous animal. It is there in the carnivorous animals and it is there present in the humans also. Now you have said that herbivorous animals rotate their jaws while eating. I have never seen, an, seen a man rotating his See, jaws. It's a question of your, if you want to put a question, you are most welcome. Put it's forward. not a lecture your session. Question, just we, are, we are not here to hear your impressions. If you are, you are most welcome no, to ask a me a question. For, uh, Say, ask me a direct question, I will be too willing to give you a reply. See, because my, 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 both my, my, my Mr. Trivedi and you. myself, we have got other appointments, we will be leaving me. after this. You okay. ask your question okay. in three to four sentences, okay. that's all. My three to four question, sentences. What was the need for you to give the differentiate be, differentiation between herbivorous and carnivorous animals? What do you want to emphasize? Yeah. It is uh, a very natural thing that when I stated that almost all limbs and parts of the body of a human being are very similar 
to herbivorous animals, it is for the enlightened uh, audience to decide whether I say, whether you agree with me or not. If you agree, it's well and good. Otherwise, if you don't agree, then also well and good. Who am I to say that you must agree on one point or others? That's okay. Because what I have stated is a scientific fact, which I have got uh, reasons and I have got proof for that. But it is for the audience to see whether it is uh, you are agreeable to that or not. Or my only point was that, by nature, a human being is more, not, not only more, but 100%, he is a herbivorous and by certain circumstances or by some other reasons, he has been made a carnivorous. Now friends, I must tell you that I am extremely delighted to be here this morning and sharing our views and so many misconceptions about Islam is now cleared by our learned Dr. Jakir. We never knew that these things are said in Islam and for that I am extremely thankful to Islam Research Foundation and I am also thankful to my friend Mr. Salecha Rushab Foundation and because of the time constraint of Mr. Trivedi and myself, because we have got other uh, engagements, we will uh, take your uh, leave and again thank you very much. Mr. Bade. Mr. Bade has to ask. Yes, you are Mr. Bade? Yes. No, well, excuse me. Mr. Bade has been requested specially to be given a chance to ask question. We have honored that request and he will be given a chance now. After that, Mr. Trivedi, the last question from that side. And then, yes, last question from there. Ladies, I think, are less in number, so we disallow those two questions which were missed out. I hope <laughs> that would be fair, Mr. Trivedi. <laughs> yes, Mr. Bade, then you, and then we finish the session. Yes, Mr. Hari Om to Hindus. Are, uh, those, in the excuse, sorry. Uh, after we conclude the session, two people will get a chance to hear do Dr. Zakir. If you want to hear the answer, and those who want to hear can stay back, others can go. Yes, Mr. Bade. Hari Om to Hindus, Jai Jinendra to Jains, Salam Walaikum to Muslim Bhai. Walaikum Asalaam. A uh, request to Dr. Zakir, I have all the answers of all your 20 questions, but that will not allow. Kindly give me a chance. Any, any time you will get the logical answers of all the 20 questions, number one. Now, uh, you re, uh, all the religions they follow the God, God, God is Almighty. Now that means one should follow, the, follow his rules also. Now what is uh, uh, given by the God, the rules formed up by the God? Ek, ek si baat hai, ki jab Bhagwan ne janam diya hai, to unhone kuch Sir, yeah. Sir, I am not question. giving lecture. I am not See, giving, I giving I would apply minute. the same rule I applied you, to the last speaker. One minute. Put your question in five sentences. Assume Dr. Zakir and Mr. Zaveri know the background. Ask your question. Six I'm sentences, ask, I'm please. I am asking you the question only. The Bhagwan ne humare liye jo bhi kuch diya hai, unhone kuch role form karke diye hai. Jaise ki humare liye sabse essential baat hai hawa ki. Plenty of hawa is available. Abundant hawa is available. Uske baad pani rehta hai. Pani where you go, pani is available. Now, another thing is food, which is which I am coming to the question. The food, Bhagawan has given us the food also. Kashmir mein hai, humare liye Kashmir mein hai, ilake ke mutabik diya hai, Kashmir mein hai, humare liye almonds diya hai, kaju diya hai, badam diya hai, pisti diya hai, jaha ke wahaan jaruri hai. One second. Rajasthan mein jao, aapko wahaan, wo temperature ke mutabik aapko kharbuja milega, tarbuja milega. Yaha humare liye, one second question, question I am telling you. या हमारे लिए हलवा बना के केले पे ऊपर रख दिया और व्हाटेवर इजीली इज अवेलेबल ही हैज गिवन इज प्लेंटी नाउ द व्हाटेवर ही हैज गिवन इज प्लेंटी इज चीपर एंड व्हाटेवर ही सेज नो इट इज नॉट टू बी टेकन और इट इज रिस्ट्रिक्टेड शुड बी इट ही हैज मेड इट्स कॉस्टली सो आर वी फॉलोइंग द रूल ऑफ द गॉड सर व्हाट इज योर क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस टॉपिक वेरी गुड अंडरस्टूड ओके वेरी आई वांट टू द क्वेश्चन very long question, very good question. <laughs> See, I'm in the field, I can make out the question, I'm in the field. Regarding your first part, that you can answer all 20 points. I've got various students in this field. I'll ask one of my students to have a dialogue at IRF. If you want, anytime, which date? Next Sunday, next Sunday. Not me, my student, next Sunday. I can, I can answer to anybody. Next Sunday. Anybody. Next Sunday. Anybody. Okay, no. done. Next Sunday you are invited. What's your name? Mr. Brother, your name? Everything will be given. Mr. Mr. Bade will come to IRF at 10.30, fine. 10.30 morning, fine. Sunday. Fine. Same format here, and my student will debate. Anyone? Same topic.
His question that God has provided air, right, water, everything easily available. So why go for things which are uneasily available and costly? Very good question. That you have to point out to Mr. Zaveri. He is telling that vegetables should be transported to Arctic Circle. <laughs> vegetables should be transported to, to deserts. Tell him, I didn't say that. I'm saying if vegetable is available, have vegetable. If animal is available, have the lawful animal. You have to pose that question to him, not to me. Point number one. You should have easily available food as long as it is lawful. We should have expensive food, you told me. It's like I telling a rich person, why are you living in Nariman Point? You know, one square feet of land, apartment, Nariman Point, costs 25,000 rupees. Come to Mira Road, only 1,000 rupees per square feet. <laughs> when the rich man can afford to pay money to buy a good flat, why are you preventing a rich man to buy good food? And non veg food, in protein, in and in various ways, medically, it is superior, it's of higher quality. So if rich man can afford it, why are you stopping? If you can't afford, have vegetables. I'm not stopping you. Hope that answers the question. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Uh, we'll not allow that question. Mr. Zaveria said he would like to, he's, he's exhausted and we respect his views. Uh, uh, he would like to leave, so we'll not allow that question, but we'll allow two people here who are to ask questions after Mr. Z Zaverian leave, because I promised them. Yes, no. yes uh, Mr. Dhanraj Sarlecha would propose a vote of thanks, after which those who would like to leave may leave, those who would like to hear those two questions and two answers may sit. Excuse me, one question from the lady's side. It's not working. Uh, no, hello. The meeting would be formally closed. Only two questions hello. after the meeting would be allowed. Hello. Excuse me, this is one yes. last question from the ladies. This is for Dr. Zakir. Uh, no, we'll allow the... No, we'll, uh, no, after this, just two people and one from the ladies, no one else would be... Uh, one, one, two, three, four. Four questions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello? It, it, Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Tarved is saying I should be strict. Now the thing is that I am being compassionate. I give chance to two people here. Now everyone is demanding a uh, What we allow? Vote of thanks right away. Then four questions, two here, one there, one there, then close. That's final. Yes, Mr. Dhanraj Salecha to propose a vote of thanks. Chief guest Sri Vaipi Trivedi, learned speakers of dialogue, distinguished guests, brothers and sisters. It's really my pleasant duty to offer vote of thanks on behalf of all the three organizations on whose behalf I thank Sri Vaipi Trivedi to spare his valuable time and grace this occasion as chief guest. I am really thankful to both the speakers for their most interesting and informative discussion and above all I thank you all the participants for participating in the debate. Thank you. Thank you sir. Now we continue on with the four questions. The, the chief guest, Mr. Trivedi, Mr. Zaveri are excused. Those who would like to hear the two, three or four questions aloud may sit back. We will continue in a minute as the chief guest and, and the speaker leave. The formal program is closed. We will have an informal four questions aloud for the audiences, for the four questioners who didn't get a chance because of my interfering and giving the other speakers a chance. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. We are starting the sequel question answer session right away. Yes, brother. My question is, are non-vegetarian food deficient in nutrition? The brother asked a very good question. That are non-vegetarian food deficient in any nutrient? Yes, they are. It would be wrong on my part to say no. I'm not a fanatic non-vegetarian. It's deficient in carbohydrate, vitamin C. But this is easily available in vegetables. Non-veg, we have vegetables. And fruits, they are rich in vitamin C. We can have fruits. But as a normal comparison, a nutritive value, if you analyze the non-veg food, as I mentioned earlier, it contains first-class proteins, high quality, and complete protein. Contains essential fatty acids, even iron, and one of the good foods is egg, which the speaker spoke so much against egg, egg. The egg contains about six grams of protein, one large egg. The half of it is the egg white, and the egg white is known as an ideal protein. Ideal protein with a protein by which other proteins are judged. It contains all the essential amino acids, 
in the right quantity egg also contains riboflavin iron folate vitamin b12 vitamin d vitamin e one of the few only foods which contain vitamin d is egg egg is given to people who are sick and are convalescing who are improving from sickness you know why it's easily digested contains all the requirement spoke so much about egg it has little negative factors also it's also called a nutrient dense food because it contains all the essential nutrients in the right quantity without excess of any one particular substance and contains less calorie contains 70 calories only one large egg but the many foods which contain essentials amino acids which are not there in the veg food in the veg food what we have to do if we require all the nutrients a person can be a veg and get the nutrients how by selecting the particular diet by selecting the vegetable is eating if this vegetable deficient in one amino acid have the other vegetable which has it so if we selectively choose this in the correct balance and monitor it then he will be healthy in non veg food just as a non veg food and normally you won't be deficient in the nutrients so that's the question yes uh, brother my name is babu bhai javedi dr zakir dr zakir naik mentioned in his speech he tried to quote authorities alternative to dr dean arnish dr dean arnish has has been a pioneer in the field of research on reversal of heart diseases and he has now come to be acclaimed as an authority his contribution to the field has been recognized by the president of united states by appointing him as an advisor to advise americans on health matters it is at the instance of dr arnish that now it has been incorporated in the authoritative medical textbooks that heart disease can be reversed through the diet diet which has been practiced and preached by dr uh, dr arnish and dr da and this this particular diet consists exclusively of vegetarian food now i would like to know from dr zakir naik when he has quoted alternative authorities what he has to say about dr dean arnish research which has cured thousands of patients of coronary coronary disease without bypass surgery brother asked a very good question very relevant question to the point that what do i have to speak about dr arnish who is very famous and he has said that the heart disease can be reversed by food which is only vegetarian food i agree does it make non veg food prohibited do you know diabetes mellitus brother diabetes mellitus you don't require dr arnish to say if a person is suffering from diabetes severe diabetes mellitus if he doesn't take non veg treatment of insulin produced by bovine by pancreas of cow or of pig or human being he will die so if a non veg food can cure diabetes mellitus that doesn't make veg food prohibited i agree with dr arnish it proves that heart diseases can be prevented or cured by veg diet i agree but what mr rashmi bhai davari said dr arnish said it should be prohibited as a general rule for heart patient i agree people may differ many doctors may differ i agree i agree but to say because it cures heart disease non veg should be prohibited as a general rule then why isn't america banning non veg food advisor to american government advisor to american government why doesn't the government take the advice of dr arnish and stop non veg food why what his research is if his authority he is right but to quote the authority and then say he banned it i doubt whether dr arnish ever banned it i doubt i have my doubts show me the statement where it says that no human being ever in this life should have any non veg food i challenge you i challenge you he may say heart patients there are other authorities i quoted dr william t jarvis dr k jerry several several but i am more more pragmatic i agree with him it's helpful in curing heart disease not as a general rule hope that answers the question i'm very clear yes sister 
this is regarding uh, since uh, Dr. Zakir is a scientist and a doctor himself, so I would like him to enlighten me on the 15 years of clinical trial on... I didn't get the question, sir. Can you repeat the question? 15 years of clinical trial at the National Cancer Research Institute at Maryland uh, in USA on this uh, red meat. Red meat causes cancer and all those things. Is it, is it possible for him to enlighten me on this? Thank you. It's a very good question. The sister said out of 15 years of research in some cancer hospital. Research, again, not fact. There's a difference between research and fact. But I agree with that research also. I've read that research. Whether from cancer hospital or which hospital which she's referring to, I've read several research that it does cause cancer of the colon. Excessive eating of non-veg causes cancer of colon if it doesn't contain diet rich in fiber. If the diet is rich in fiber, however much meat you have, it will not cause cancer. If it's combined with excessive eating of non-veg and lack of fibrous diet, you know, veg food you eat, it can't be digested because the cellulose can't be digested, it remains as fibers, which helps in the motility. Excessive eating of non-veg with not eating fibrous diet causes cancer of colon. But if you have the proper combination, everyone having red meat doesn't have cancer. Excessive eating, Quran says it is haram. So they are going against the Quran, they are bound to get diseased. That doesn't mean non veg should be prohibited, it should be said. Excessive eating of non veg should be prohibited. Hope that answers the question. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khairan. Oh.